Well, we're going to look at an oblique planes question. Um, what we're trying to do is find the true shape of the flat surface, of the cut surface uh, of the solid. This will work for laminas. We'll be using it later on when we get onto surface geometry. Um, so it has lots of applications. But what we're trying to do is, in our elevation, we can see the true size of it. In our plan, we don't see the true size of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, find the true shape of it, find a view where we'll see the true shape of the object. So what we're going to do is uh, first have a look at the question. So the question is on page 151 inside in the textbook, uh, but the topic that we're actually doing is on page 153. So that is to find the true shape of an, ob an object on an oblique plane. So I started and got some of this question set up. It's based on, a, the plan is based on a regular hexagon um, with distance across the points being 66 millimeters, so from here to here is 66 millimeters. As each of our regular hexagon is base, uh, we can find six equilateral triangles inside it. Each distance from here to here is a side length. This is a side length and another side length. So from here to here across is going to be equal to two side lengths. So 30, uh, 66, splitting that is 33. Our side length for our um, hexagon is 33 millimeters. Our pyramid, we're told in the question, gives us an altitude of 80 millimeters and we're locating that um, after drawing the plan. So it's best in this case to draw the plan before you attempt drawing the traces. It just works a little bit easier. So after all of this is set up, we draw everything on it lightly, um, just to make things a bit clearer for ourselves. Um, and so that we're not going to be rubbing out lines later on. So next is we're going to be looking at putting in our traces. So we're going to start with the horizontal traces. We have a position for that. Um, oh, we have a position for the vertical trace as well. But if we just measure across here the 48 millimeters along our XY line from the left hand edge as given in the question, our trace is going to be down here at 45 degrees. and it comes quite close to it, but it doesn't actually touch it. Now for the other part, for our vertical trace, it's at an angle of 35 degrees, as given in the question. So 35 degrees is here. Set it up with our protractor. And this gives me a vertical trace. So vert, V, T, and H. That's the question set up. What we need to do now is we need to draw an auxiliary view um, because we need before we can find the true shape, but we need to see what it looks like when it's actually cut. So I'm going to do what we normally do. I'm going to look along the horizontal trace <coughs> and find an edge view of the oblique plane. So I'll be looking along this way. So I'm going to project my lines along this, along my horizontal trace. I'm going to put in an X1, uh, Y1 one line that is perpendicular. It's really important that it's perpendicular to the horizontal trace. So x1, y1. And this has to go in. This has to be at 90 degrees. From there, we're going to need to find the height of our vertical trace, so find the, the edge view of the plane. And to do that, we can take any random height in the elevation. So if I take this random red line, that gives me a height. Now, so this is the height in the elevation. In plan, it is this dot down here. And we're going to project that up into our auxiliary view. I'm going to copy the height that this is. So this height here. Copying that height and marking that up in uh, my auxiliary view. So the height here is the exact same. All I've done is project it from one view into the next. These two heights are the exact same. From my trace, the horizontal trace comes up, it touches our XY line at this point. Extend that line through. That there is 
the edge view of the trace. Okay, so from here what we're going to do is we're going to project each point up from uh, the plan into our auxiliary elevation. As always, it's important that we label our points first, just so that it becomes a little bit clearer for us. And we'll say O for the apex. So each point is projected. Um, a, B, C, D, E, and F are all on the ground line. They're on our X, Y line. So this is D. This is E. It may not look like you need to be labeling the points, but it is important, um, especially when we're projecting our lines back down uh, in a moment so that we find the correct position for each one. Let's see. Our point O, our apex, is going to be up along here somewhere. What height it is at is determined by whatever height it is in the elevation, which was given to us as 80 millimeters. So you can measure just up 80 or copy it with your compass. Check that it's at the correct height. Follow it out along the line O, and from our XY line, measure the height up. From here, we need to draw in our shape. So F. Uh, e, F, A, and B, in the way I have them labeled, they're all going to be visible lines and they're going to join to the apex. So this one down to E, which is just inside. D is going to be a hidden detail line, that's at the back, can't see that one. Uh, F is visible. C is also a hidden detail line. I know it's hidden detail because when I'm looking at it from this side, it's on the back of it, so I don't see those edges. A and B then are also visible lines. So that's my auxiliary view complete. I can now see on each line where each point is going to be, um, or where the oblique plane is cutting through the pyramid. For the line uh, OB, it's going to be cutting through it here. So what we're going to do in this case is project each point back from where the oblique plane cuts through that line and find where it cuts the same line back here. So this is the point, one point that I'm looking for on the line OA. That's going to project back to here. This is on the line OA. Uh, this is on the line C. So that's going to come back to the line from O to C. So that's this point uh, on the line F. Again, following the same idea, um, it cuts through the line D, or from OD here, and then through the line OE, just up above it, giving me that point there. So that's not D, this is D. Once I have all of those found in plan, all I'm going to do then is join all of them up together. And that's going to give me what the cut surface looks like in plan. So it's still not the total object cut, but it is what it looks like in plan. So if I just do a quick recap on everything that we have there. Um, I have a number of, I, I looked along the horizontal trace and I drew an auxiliary view, and that needs to be perpendicular to the line. So this line here is perpendicular to it. Um, from there I project all my points up into the auxiliary view and mark the heights that they are in the elevation. So A, B, C, D and F are all on the ground line, so they stay on the ground line here. O in my elevation is up a height of 80, so that's going to be marked up a height of 80 up here also. So now that we have our points in plan of what the current surface looks like, um, we're now able to find each of those points up in the elevation. So again, it's done the exact same way that it was in the auxiliary view. So where it was the line cut, the point um, on the line OE, OD, and so on, that was projected back down. Here we already have our point in the plan now, so I can see where it cuts the line OD, it cuts it at this point. So I can project that point up into the elevation and find where that cuts the same line up in the elevation. 
So OD is my line going from the apex down to this point on the ground. I'm going to project from this point straight up until it touches the line OD. So that's giving me that point. Do the same thing for OE. OE is down here, it's quite low. This is E. D, this one here is going to be C. So C and E are in the same uh, starting line. So this here is E. Uh, F, again, done the exact same way. It's important, again, that these points are labeled just so you don't join the wrong thing to the wrong one. And label correctly. And then finally A, that is point A here. After that then, it's just a matter of joining all these points up. D goes to E, D also goes to C, which goes to B, to A, back to F, and back over here to E. So now we can darken in each of our lines as we know where the top of them is cut off at. And A. There is a small bit of hidden detail in some of them, so from here down is going to give me hidden detail. And from B, just down as far as E is also hidden detail. In plan I can do the same thing, I can darken in all my lines now, because I know what well, this is the entir um, entirety of the object when it's cut by the solid. And again, joining up our lines, coming across where the apex should be, um, gives us an idea of where each piece is. So I'm just going to shade in um, the surface, the cut surfaces, so that we can identify that a little bit clearer. So this is the first part of this question set up. This is finding um, what the cut solid looks like um, or what a pyramid looks like when it has been cut by an oblique plane.